Banana Hobby would like to introduce the HSD Sky Trainer. The HSD Sky Trainer is an updated version of the Sky Trainer that we have offered for a while. This new version incorporates some great new features that only approve upon a great classic trainer. It has a wingspan of 1,410 millimeters or 4.6 feet and has a length of 1,100 millimeters or 3.6 feet. Powering the Sky Trainer is a 900 kV brushless outrunner motor spinning a scale three bladed propeller attached to a 30 amp ESC and this provides ample power for basic and more advanced flight. The plane is run on a five channel setup featuring flaps, ailerons, rudder and elevator, and it has a steerable nose wheel. The manual recommends using 11.1-2200 LiPo, and this is a great battery size for the plane and it will give you an average of about five to six minutes of flying time. In addition, the HSD has upgraded the battery compartment and installed a balsa support tray and a new access hatch that snaps snugly into place. Behind the battery compartment is another access hatch that contains the high quality HSD metal gear elevator and rudder servos and these are attached to a sturdy plastic mounting bracket. This compartment is also where all of your servo wires will connect to your receiver unless you choose to move them. The servo wires are nicely marked with which controls they go to and you simply plug them into your receiver. Also located in this compartment is the lighting control board. Now it may be tucked underneath the servo mounting tray but it is easily accessible. Once you power up your plane, if the lights are working, there is no real need to even mess with this board, but it is a good idea to know where it is, just in case you do have a problem. To gain access to the motor and ESC, you first have to remove the propeller and spinner hardware. The spinner can be a bit tricky to remove, but the easiest way is by simply pinching and twisting it a bit, and exposing the plastic tabs that are holding it on. Once you get those tabs exposed, you may want to use a small, flat screwdriver to press on them gently, and help get that spinner off. Once you have removed the prop spinner, then remove the prop lock by unscrewing it. And again, you may need a small screwdriver for some leverage to get it undone. Then you can remove the washer, propeller, and the spinner backing plate. Then simply slide off the cowling that is held on magnetically. Something else you may want to do when purchasing the plane is pick up a spare propeller or two. The prop is made of a durable plastic, but when learning to fly and having the occasional accident, props tend to get banged up and break sometimes. Once we have gained access to the engine compartment, we can then see the robust metal engine mount and the thick plastic firewall that the engine and nose wheel are attached to. This is a great feature of the Sky Trainer, having a thick, strong plastic firewall. A lot of other trainers use much thinner plastic or balsa mounting points that have a tendency to fail after a few hard nose wheel landings. Now if you do end up bending a nose gear, repairing it is rather simple by simply unscrewing a set screw and replacing the part. Now if you're using this video as a bit of an assembly guide, go ahead and leave the propeller off the airplane and let's take a look at the wings and their assembly. Both main wings simply slide together and have a carbon fiber main wing spar. The main wings have two plastic nubs that fit into the main fuselage at the top of the windshield and attach in the trailing edge with two screws. Then there are two main wing struts that are attached to the fuselage and the underside of the main wing. The struts also feature nice recessed areas that allow the nut to fit into them and stop them from vibrating loose during flight. Now before you attach the main wings and struts for final assembly, let's look at the main wing connection boards. This is another area that HST has simplified and really improved on the Sky Trainer. These are really slick in that they simplify assembly and make for a really clean setup and avoid large bundles of wires that have to be zip tied or taped out of the way to keep things orderly. The connection board is nicely marked showing you exactly where the flaps, ailerons, and LED wires plug into. Now when you pull the airplane out of the box, these wires should already be connected to the appropriate connections, but you will want to check them to make sure. But we have removed the servo leads from their connections points just to show you the markings in this video. The boards also have a plus and a minus on the board showing you which way to connect the servo leads if you decide to remove them or have to change something out. For those of you who are new to the hobby, the black wire is a negative and the red wire is a positive. The white wire is a signal wire or a wire that sends the commands to the servo for which way to move. Now that all the connections from the wings are made to the board, you need to attach the main signal wire that comes up from the fuselage. Do this to both sides and then go ahead and set the plane down and grab a battery in your transmitter. Now you're going to want to check and make sure that the ailerons and flaps are all hooked up properly and moving in the correct directions for flight. 
Now again, for those of you that are new to the hobby, when you are working on an airplane, it's always a good idea to remove the propeller, especially the first time that you're going to power up any airplane. Now the first thing you want to do is turn on your transmitter and then plug in the battery. This way if the motor goes to full power or a control surface goes haywire, you have ability to control it. Once the battery is connected, you should hear a series of tones from the motor and the ESC. These beeps tell you the cell count of the battery. In this case, we're using a three cell LiPo, so we should hear three beeps. After we hear those tones, power should be properly connected and we're ready to check our control surfaces. First, let's look at the ailerons and flaps to check our wing root connections. If we go to the left with the control stick, we should see the left aileron move up and the right aileron move down. And if we move the stick to the right, this should go the opposite direction. Now for the flaps. I prefer to set them up on a three position switch. And if you choose, you can set them up to operate at a slower rate so that you can have more scale look and they don't change your flight characteristics as rapidly. You can really only do this though if you're using a transmitter with this capability. Now if this is the first plane you're flying and you're using a basic training radio, that's no problem. Just go ahead and connect your flaps to the appropriate flap channel. And then you'll either have no flaps or full flaps, which will work just fine for basic flying. Now if the ailerons didn't move and the flaps did, we need to switch the wires on the wing root connection board and then recheck their direction. So let's say that the ailerons are working, but in reverse of the direction we want them to. But the easiest fix is probably just to reverse the direction via your transmitter. If you're using a digital radio, you're going to have to go into the servo settings and select reverse for that servo. In this case, it would be the ailerons. If you're using an analog controller, it's going to be a flick of a switch towards the bottom of the controller most likely. While we are here, let's make sure that the red and green position lights are working and that the landing light is working. If they are not working, check the connectors at the wing root and make sure that they are plugged in correctly. If that doesn't fix the problem, then you may need to check the lighting control board. Now let's check that the rudder and elevator are moving in the proper directions. For the elevator, if we pull back on the right stick to climb, the elevator should move up, pushing the tail down, raising the nose, and vice versa if we push the stick forward. For the rudder, if we move the stick to the left, the rudder should move to the left. This will push the tail to the right and the nose to the left. With this rudder check, we need to take a look at the nose wheel steering as well. This is very important because while on the ground, the steerable nose wheel helps a lot and you want it to be going in the proper direction. If we move the stick to the left, the nose wheel should point to the left. If we move it to the right, it should point to the right. You can do a pretty good eyeball check and check to see that everything's straight in alignment, but the only real way to truly tell if it's going to taxi straight is to do a taxi check. Now that we've verified all the servos are working properly, you can go ahead and disconnect the battery and move on to assembling the airplane and go fly. Now for today's flight, we operated using the recommended 11.1-2200 LiPo pack and used the recommended CG of 60 millimeters. We will start out showing you just some easy pattern work with a few touch and goes, and then we'll move into some maneuvers to show you some of the plane's capabilities. Now the weather at the flying site was less than ideal, but offered a fun and challenging set of flying conditions. The winds were blowing at a steady 12 miles per hour and gusting up to about 17 miles per hour. So this made the air rather turbulent, but it does show you just how well the Sky Trainer can perform in less than ideal flying conditions. The Sky Trainer easily lifts off the ground and has a rather short takeoff roll, even without flaps and about 50% power. It's a really nice looking plane in the sky and has a very scale look to it. And it's very stable even with a few bumps in the air.
When you do add flaps, there is a slight nose up pitching tendency, but it's easily controllable by either adding forward elevator manually, or adding auto elevator trim for using a controller with that capability. When you come into land, the airplane settles nicely into ground effect with just a little bit of power, and then you can either get on the gas and go around, or just retard the throttle and settle down for a landing. If you do happen to have a bit of a bounce or two on landing and need to go around, the airplane has plenty of power to go around, even at slow speeds. Now for those of you that want to push the envelope a bit, if you have a nice headwind, the Sky Trainer can do some awesome short field takeoffs, especially using full flaps and full power. Basic aerobatics such as loops and rolls are no trouble either. Let's say you're flying around trying to feel out the airplane and you get a little slow and end up stalling the airplane. Don't worry, it has some very nice stall characteristics and recovers well. Even if you do have a little bit of aileron or rudder put in when you stall and a wing drops, simply remove that input, lower the nose, gain some speed and fly it away. Then if you begin trying some more advanced maneuvers and don't perform them quite the way you wanted to and end up stalling and spinning, as long as you have enough altitude, the sky train will come out of the spin nicely. In all, the airplane is a great plane for both beginners and more seasoned pilots, and it will allow all skill levels to just go have fun and fly.